Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, this is the Acer Swift 3 and it features an AMD Athlon 300U APU along with Vega 3 graphics. I purchased this laptop because I was curious as to answering the simple question, can it game? Well, today we're going to be finding out. So let's jump straight into it, talk about the specs of this machine and discuss the somewhat unheard of 300U, which seems to be in a lot of lower end machines these days. So if you buy a laptop like this for everyday use, you probably won't be disappointed. The Athlon 300U makes the machine feel snappy and operation, at least with the Acer, remains silent. The APU is clocked at 2.4GHz, features 2 cores and 4 threads, as well as Vega graphics clocked at 1GHz. It holds its own very well in Cinebench R15, whereby it nearly matches the desktop 200GE in both multi and single threaded results. We've reviewed that APU before and personally I still think it's a delightful choice for those building low powered HTPCs or extremely budget focused gaming rigs. The Mobile 300U probably doesn't deserve quite the equal praise because its performance will depend on other factors right out of the box such as the amount of RAM pre-installed in the laptop and more often than not it seems to be paired with just 4 gigs of single channel DDR4 in machines at this £350 price point. That's not the end of the world as with this Acer at least there is room for another module with up to 12 gigs total capacity. But let's move on. The first thing to do was to switch Windows 10 out of S mode. S mode is basically a streamlined version of the traditional Windows 10 OS according to Microsoft anyway, but it does limit you to installing programs and apps exclusively from the Microsoft Store. Luckily it only takes a couple of clicks to activate the one way switch back into Windows Home and it's an entirely free process. With that we can finally begin. Let's see if the 300U can game. I downloaded everything again instead of hooking up an external drive with my games on, reason being I wanted to see what could fit on this 128GB SSD. Turns out we had room for a couple of demos and a few big titles with 18 gigs of space to spare. These games include the Resident Evil 7 and Mafia 2 demos, Counter Strike Global Offensive, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and Overwatch. There's probably still room for a few older games or some indie titles too without the need for a storage upgrade. Again, laptops at this price point seem to include rather small storage capacities these days. First up for the gaming tests was Resident Evil 7. I decided to keep a 30fps frame rate target in mind here, a 60 was probably asking too much of the 300U. By default the game chose high settings, but this proved to be disastrous, so I switched everything to a mixture of low and medium, with the texture quality settings on medium as well, and any anti-aliasing turned off. To be honest, the jagged edges add to the gritty art style of the game, at least that's the excuse I'm going with here. 30fps is exceeded here and although there are a couple of frame dips, the slow paced nature of this game means the FPS stays quite stable throughout. I started playing through the full game last night, in the dark, and yeah, I'm terrible with horror games so sitting in the dark with just the fire on didn't help settle my nerves that's for sure. It's a couple of years old now but it's still worth a play and doesn't ask too much of your computer hardware. I'm going to come right out and say this, Mafia 2 is one of the best games of all time. It's an absolute classic, pretty well matched by its predecessor, but Mafia 3 in my opinion, despite nailing a 60s feel, was nowhere near as good as this one. That's partly why I've included it here, because although it's quite old now, it's perfect for lower end systems, and it's still well worth a playthrough. I'm not going to give too much away, in case any of you have never played it, but I always seem to dig this one out near Christmas. I've still got my Xbox 360 copy on the shelf, and to be honest that's my go-to version for some reason, but the PC release is very cheap these days, and the demo is a good way to see how well it runs before buying it. Here we are averaging 45 FPS on the 300U and Vega 3 graphics. When I first started this level, there were a couple of heavy frame drops, down to single digits in fact, which lasted a couple of seconds, but things seemed to even out after these occurrences. 
Counter-Strike Global Offensive runs at 60 FPS on this hardware at 720p with the very low settings. It still looks good and plays fairly well overall. I fired up the Dust 2 level, a classic map, and wandered around the map apparently creating an old school montage, only it wasn't me doing the handiwork so much as it was me getting wiped out numerous times over and over. I need some sort of highlight reel of me trying to play this game or something as a demonstration of how you don't do it. <laughs> anyway, CSGO won't give you many problems on the 300U and Vega 3 graphics, so a laptop featuring this APU might be sounding right for you just about now, if you need a portable machine that's capable of some light gaming. Hold your horses for a moment though, because as we move on, things do get a little rougher. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, for example, at 720p with 70% or the lowest render scaling option, will only manage about 24 FPS on average with this hardware, though, to be honest, that was sort of expected. How cinematic? This frame rate worsens when driving around the map or exploring bigger, busier areas. There are occasions when the frame rate hits 30 and even exceeds it, but this isn't really what I'd call a playable experience. Yes, even I wouldn't call this playable. Aside from the resolution, the settings were also turned down to very low with anti-aliasing off. I bet a few INI tweaks would be able to iron things out here and allow us to hit a more sensible average, but as it is out of the box, PUBG and the 300U don't go very well together at all. Finally we have Overwatch and thankfully there is another resolution scale slider in the game's option menu here. This means that despite defaulting to 720p, the game can be set to as little as 33% of this from the graphical menu. Going all the way down didn't let us achieve 60, so I stuck with 50% resolution scale to hit 40 FPS on average, which I thought was okay. It really doesn't look that bad, especially on the laptop's 14 inch display, but I think machines like this are best used with 720p resolution as far as gaming is concerned. 8 gigs of RAM from factory would also be a nice touch, but at least it's upgradable. I'm sure most people buying something like this aren't going to be purchasing it with gaming primarily in mind, but if the hardware exists and it's cheap, you better believe I'll be there to put it through its paces regardless. Back to Overwatch briefly, and as you can tell this is from a bot match this footage, as being the genius I am, forgot to record with the external capture hardware first time round, but the results are from a Fraps test during an online match with the same map. So the results here you see on screen in terms of the frame rate 1% and 0.1% lows are accurate to an online match with other players. I also use this laptop to edit, render and upload this very video as well as create the thumbnail. The two programs I used were Photoshop CS3, a rather old version of the software, as well as Premiere Pro 2015, again an older version, but the version that I prefer. Now both of these ran okay on the Athlon 300U here, Photoshop ran the best, but there were a few issues in Premiere Pro. Again, it's to be expected, this is a 2-core 4-threaded laptop CPU with integrated Vega 3 graphics, but I think considering those specs, it did fairly well. The main problems I ran into here was when we rendered the effect into out. This took quite a long time, and rendering the video at the end of the creation process also took a fairly long amount of time, but it's certainly doable. If you have a laptop like this, you want to make a few YouTube videos, perhaps gameplay videos that are 3-4 minutes long, then it will be an okay experience. If you want to make those longer videos, those 10 minute plus creations, well, you'll probably be in for a little bit of a waiting time, to say the least. If you're in the market for a brand new laptop though, well, this really isn't too bad. You'll have to consider how much the price difference is between a laptop like this and one that features a Ryzen APU as the difference will probably be quite significant in some situations. All in all then, well, the Athlon 300U performed about as well as I expected. Some games will be playable, albeit with lower resolutions and settings, but I think in an entry level laptop and one that's brand new, well, the results really aren't too bad. It's nice to know that one minute you could be doing some office or homework, sending a few emails, browsing Facebook and whatnot, and then if you want to fire up CSGO or Overwatch, you can do so without too much concern. Providing you don't mind 30 FPS of course. 
With all that said, well I hope you've enjoyed this video. I wanted to check out the 300U because I couldn't actually find any other reviews on it. So hopefully this answers any questions some of you may have had as to whether this is a decent chip or not. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.